Slide 1. Welcome to installation and maintenance of health IT systems, elements of a typical EHR system. This is Lecture A. This component covers fundamentals of selection, installation, and maintenance of typical electronic health records, EHR systems. Slide 2. Today's first lecture, Health IT System Elements, is designed to give you a brief overview of a typical electronic health record or EHR system. We will discuss the Institute of Medicine's six aims for improving healthcare, what an EHR is, and how it has evolved. Additionally, we will outline the types of network elements an EHR system needs to function, as well as its typical hardware and software components. The objectives for this unit are to identify the core elements that comprise an EHR system, describe the use of client and server hardware for access to and storage of EHRs, describe network needs for access to and storage of EHRs, identify the application software and back-end data storage software needed for a comprehensive, effective health IT system. The Institute of Medicine, also referred to as the IOM, is an independent organization which works to improve healthcare at the national level by delivering unbiased, evidence-based healthcare advice. According to a report completed by IOM in 2001, the United States ranked 37th worldwide for quality of healthcare. That same year, the Institute of Medicine compiled a report listing 13 recommendations designed to revamp the nation's healthcare system. One of these core recommendations was a call for a renewed effort on the part of the government and private sectors to build an information infrastructure to support healthcare delivery, community health, quality measurement and improvement, public accountability, and improving research and clinical education. The committee further noted that information technology holds enormous potential for transforming the healthcare delivery system and challenged the healthcare arena to virtually eliminate handwritten clinical data by the end of the decade. The Electronic Health Record, or EHR, system, though not born from this effort, certainly has seen renewed life and product evolution as the healthcare arena struggles to meet the IOM's challenge to improve healthcare delivery on a national scale. In 2007 to 2008, surveys of ambulatory practices indicated that only 4% had a fully functional electronic record system and another 13% had a basic system. However, these numbers are increasing. In the last two years alone, EHR adoption rates have doubled. A recent survey conducted in August 2011 showed that 51% of physicians' offices with three to five providers and 31% of the solo provider practices now currently use EHRs, many of which were added in the past few months, thanks in part to 2009's HITECH Act. Through the HITECH Act, the U.S. federal government has committed billions of dollars to promote both adoption and meaningful use of EHRs. The IOM listed six aims in improving healthcare quality. One, to make healthcare environments safer for their patients. Two, to provide more effective healthcare. Three, to make healthcare more patient-centered, that is, to ensure that the patient is more involved in the decision-making process and has a better understanding of the healthcare choices available. Four, to improve the timeliness of healthcare service. Five, to make the process of providing healthcare as a whole more efficient. Six, to work toward the elimination of healthcare disparities among diverse populations ensuring that all patients have equal access to health care. Throughout the remainder of our course, think about each of the EHR systems you will be evaluating and ask yourself how each of them adequately addresses these six aims. So what is an electronic health record anyway? According to the Computerized Patient Record, published in 1991 by the Institute of Medicine, an electronic health record system is defined as the set of components that form the mechanism by which patient records are created, used, stored, and retrieved.
A patient record system is usually located within a health care provider setting. It includes people, data, rules and procedures, processing and storage devices, for example, paper and pen, hardware and software, and communication and support facilities. The federal government has defined a complete EHR system as containing four basic functions computerized orders for prescriptions and other therapies, computerized orders for tests, reporting of test results, and physician notes. To date, however, no federally enforced single standard based on this definition has been reached, and which of these records are stored electronically is determined largely by each individual health care practice. Likewise, the Institute of Medicine has also listed the key capabilities any EHR system should address as 1. A longitudinal collection of electronic health information for and about persons, where health information is defined as information pertaining to the health of an individual or the health care provided to an individual. 2 immediate electronic access to person and population level information by authorized and only authorized users. 3. Provision of knowledge and decision support that enhance the quality, safety, and efficiency of patient care. And 4. Support of efficient processes for health care delivery. It is important to note these definitions while evaluating your present and or prospective EHR systems since an effective EHR system will ultimately be judged by how well it can adequately address and satisfy all these objectives. I will also note that when we talk about longitudinal data, collection involves repeated observations of the same items over long periods of time, often many decades. The Electronic Health Record, or EHR, is just the latest chapter in an evolutionary process which can be traced as far back as the early 1960s. The development of the electronic patient record began when El Camino Hospital teamed up with Lockheed Corporation to create a new way and more effective method of tracking patient data. Together, they spent over two years analyzing their operational data flow in order to develop a way of electronically storing and updating patient information. This system began to go live in 1973, and the first computerized patient record, or CPR system, was born. These earlier versions of electronic health records required hospitals to invest in expensive computer hardware, running Unix. El Camino's CPR ran on an IBM mainframe computer. Typically, these systems were powerful, but somewhat limited, and training costs associated with running these systems were prohibitively high. Several institutions attempted their own versions of CPRs during the 70s and 80s, but overall, successful implementation was quite difficult and rarely achieved. In the 1990s, however, computer technology was experiencing significant advances and processing power became more abundant. Additionally, the IT industry began moving toward large-scale communication networks and distributed computing models, lifting many of the limitations seen in earlier CPR technology. Ambulatory clinics began utilizing electronic medical records, or EMRs, during this time as well. However, despite software improvements, adoption rates were comparatively low. This was partly due to the rapid technological advancements in computer and software technologies, which frequently made EMR systems obsolete right out of the box. Additionally, usability issues often made adoption very difficult, particularly for smaller institutions with limited resources. By about 2000, however, PC's low cost and ubiquity lowered barriers for adopting electronic systems with a sharp decline of startup costs. Today, an abundance of inexpensive and extremely powerful computer systems are available, making EHR adoption much cheaper. What's more, electronic health record systems are simply better thanks to the adoption and evolution of graphical user interfaces, most commonly on the Windows platform. Such interfaces make learning electronic health record systems extremely easy. With training costs being dramatically cut, along with networking of computers making updating and fixes a breeze to install in comparison to the older models, the need for additional on-site IT staff has dramatically decreased.
Today, the installation of an EHR system makes more sense than ever before. So what exactly is the difference between a CPR, an EMR, and an EHR anyway? Well, generally, when we refer to a computerized patient record, or CPR, we are referring to a record system designed for use in an acute care setting, such as a hospital. While we generally think of electronic medical records, or EMRs, as simplified versions of CPRs designed for use in ambulatory care and physicians' practices. EMRs are designed to provide patient data recording and tracking and quality assurance functions within a practice. Both CPRs and EMRs are typically designed to provide interoperability only within the host enterprise, offering limited, if any real, interoperability beyond the institution. Electronic health records, or EHRs, on the other hand, are geared to provide a comprehensive health care record capable of moving with the patient. EHRs are designed for interoperability on a more regional or even global level. Since the industry shift is toward the implementation of EHR models, our component focuses on EHR implementation, though many of the underlying principles apply, regardless of how the system is categorized. It is true that many legacy EHR systems have been slow to be adopted. A research study has indicated a strong need for a more refined strategy by the industry to build more EHRs which don't force medical staff to change the way they practice medicine, but instead provides the flexibility physicians need to solve real-world issues. With that said, EHR systems still offer many potential advantages to the typical clinical environment. As an example, it's well known in the industry that doctors tend to have illegible handwriting, which can often lead to inaccurate and costly data entry errors. With an EHR system, the physician enters the data directly into the system interface itself, thereby dramatically reducing handwriting errors. With EHRs, massive amounts of data can now be stored digitally in a substantially smaller space, eliminating storage problems and virtually eliminating record search time. With an EHR system, healthcare staff can have critical patient information at their fingertips. These realized efficiencies, combined with value-added software designed to minimize procedural and prescription errors, should, over time, improve overall patient safety in the healthcare environment. The increased ease of updating records while with the patient should equate to more time devoted to physician-patient interaction. The introduction of EHR systems shows a huge potential for cost savings and decreasing workplace inefficiencies. It's expected that these cost reductions, combined with a reduction in patient care errors, should eventually result in lower malpractice premiums and litigation fees. Before we move on, let's take a moment to define two terms you will hear throughout the component, hardware and software. Hardware consists of all the physical computing devices or components that make up a computer system. Examples of hardware include desktop computers, laptops, servers, switches and routers, along with any internal components which make the devices function, such as a hard drive, a keyboard, or a NIC card. Software consists of computer programs and any of their accompanying data which tell the computer what to do and how to behave. Programmers develop software by writing lines of programming code which is eventually compiled and stored on some sort of media in an electronic format. This illustration depicts that prior to centralized EHR system management software, each organization or department maintained its own system and software designed to capture the data required for each specialty area. This meant that multiple databases and patient records existed and the healthcare provider was required to open a different client application for each department and compile the data using a manual process. Additionally, data may or may not have been in conformance with a standard. Image courtesy of National Center for Research Resources printed with permission, all rights reserved. This illustration depicts that EHR systems are designed to receive data from each of these organizational silos and compile them within a centralized database. 
EHR software is designed to compile the data in a more efficient manner, allowing the healthcare provider to access and cross-reference data from all available sources from one convenient client interface. This should allow the provider to more effectively manage patient care. Image courtesy of National Center for Research Resources, printed with permission, all rights reserved. Most of today's in-house EHR systems are based on the client-server model. The client-server model in the computing world is a structure that separates tasks or workloads between service providers, called servers, and service requesters, called clients. Usually, a client computer and a server computer are two separate devices, each customized for their designed purpose and communicating over a computer network. For example, a web client works best with a large screen display, while a web server does not need any display at all to parse out requested web pages, and it can be located anywhere. In some rare instances, however, both client software and server software reside in the same system. As we stated earlier, software can best be defined as the collection of computer programs and related data that provide the instructions for what a computer should do. EHRs use several different types of application software. A server machine is a host that is running one or more server programs which share its resources with clients. Server software is usually installed and operated from dedicated server hardware designed to reliably and efficiently handle large numbers of client requests. A client machine does not share any of its resources, but requests one or more server's content or service function. Client software, therefore, initiates communication sessions with servers, which await, listen to, incoming requests. Many business applications being written today use the client-server model. As this picture demonstrates, using a client-server architecture enables the roles and responsibilities of a computing system to be distributed throughout the network using several independent computers. All data is stored on the servers, which generally have far greater security controls than most clients. Additionally, because the data is stored centrally, it is easier to manage and update. Using a client-server model also spreads the workload among multiple systems, generally easing the burden on client systems, which would otherwise have to expend more resources for processing and storage of data. Let's summarize what we have learned so far. Despite early setbacks in implementation, EHRs hold great promise for improving safety and efficiency in the healthcare setting over the long term. EHRs require both hardware, that is, devices, computers, and network infrastructure, and software, which includes databases, applications, and device drivers, to name a few, in order to function, and that in today's market the client-server model is predominant in terms of EHR software strategies. The client-server model is a structure that separates tasks or workloads between service providers, called servers, and service requesters, called clients. Usually, a client computer and a server computer are two separate devices, each customized for their designed purpose and communicating over a computer network. In Part B of our lecture, we will discuss in more detail these software and hardware elements commonly found in EHR systems.